too. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, agenda revisions. So before I open it up, I've got a few revisions to make to the agenda. Uh, and then I'll ask for other revisions. And then I want to spend a minute or two actually reviewing the agenda and how much time we might be likely to take or set aside for different things. Um, so first, we wanted to add a discussion item 2.5 on a possible letter to VSBA. Yeah. And connected to that, we want to add an action item 3.7 to uh, authorize a letter to VSBA uh, urging action regarding future planning associates. Uh, we also need to add discussion item 2.6 about uh, basically the Act 46 meeting that we're having on Wednesday, just to talk out uh, if there's a specific way we want to structure that conversation. And then I just want to note that we may need one or two uh, executive sessions. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to come up with respect to the letter to VSBA, but it's possible, I suppose, that there could be some kind of negotiation aspect to that or agree right now, agreement. Yeah, I mean, we're too, probably too vague. I think we can do okay. most of it in open session. All right. Yeah. And then for 2.4, the superintendent contact contract at least need an executive session. Um, are there any other revisions to the agenda? Changes or so additional time? I have one more even since we just talked for the past two hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when you said to me, how's it going? I'm like, it's been a day. Uh -huh. um, sorry to be that disorganized, folks. Um, I need to talk to you about, we had talked about the last meeting. Um, the hiring of a consultant to look at to do a salary structuring of the non bargaining agreements. Okay. I need some advice of this group because uh, by moving this meeting to now, our timeline's a little off and how we might award that. Sure. So I can talk to you about all that. That we might need in an executive session because we might be talking about costs of contracts because if we got all the bids today, but we're planning to have a week and a half before we brought you who should be the award. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll add 2.7 to our discussion agenda. Consultant for contract analysis, yeah, something like that. Good. Okay. In terms of time, I was trying to game this out. It, it, it looked like a deceptively simple agenda. It's not mm -hmm. one. Um, so I thought maybe five minutes for the consent agenda, <clears throat> 15 minutes. I was going to suggest that we table when we get there the special education hiring process again because Chris is not here. Uh, and it was a particular uh, issue you wanted to speak to. 15 minutes for 2.2, 15 for 2.3, 30 for 2.4, um, 15 each for 2.5 and 2.6, 15 for action items, and, and uh, 15 for the superintendent's report. That's two hours. So we'll have to carve out some time in there for, the, uh, for 2.7. We'll manage it, yeah. Okay, if there are no other revisions uh, to the agenda, and is, are there any, is there any public comments or correspondence? Doesn't look like we have any guests, but no, okay. Uh, Lori, are you, I assume you're here for the financial report. Are there other mm -hmm. issues too that you wanted to speak to or that we can? I guess we'll In the superintendent's report, we'll probably talk about the finance. Uh, I need so to put that in there. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you comfortable staying, or do you want us to? What are we going to do? What are you doing first? Yeah, we can. You look like your head's coming back to you. She, was, <laughs> she, she won't say it, but I will. She is playing with some, there's some issue. Yeah. OK. Well, may, let's try to move up the financial report, and then something in the superintendent's yeah, report. Yeah, there's something in the superintendent's report. I want OK. Uh, any executive committee comments? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of May 30th? Uh, move to approve the executive committee minutes of uh, 5 30 Is there a second? A second. Any discussion?
Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of May 30th, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions. Okay, without objection, I would move that we uh, table 2.1, the special education hiring process, until our next meeting. Okay, so let's uh, skip down to 4.3, then, the financial report, which is on page 15. Okay. Um, so this report is not your final report for the year, but it's your first report for the month of June. All the other boards have received their report last week. Um, when I went through and updated it, there are still student information pieces that will be coming in for the next two weeks. We still have kids coming and going at the end of the school year, believe it or not. Um, so the financial system will be updated then. Um, but for this year, that money is, is a pass-through in revenue and an expense, so the net effect to this budget is zero. Um, what I have updated for the month of June, you will see under revenue changes for June. Um, we received reimbursements for some shared positions that we have throughout the supervisor union of $10,257. And you'll see that same amount in expense below the line. We have utility savings, as all schools did, this year of $1,664, which is right below it under the expense. And... Um, the conversation you'll have later with regard to job coaching to reserve the carryover from this year, it's $41,451 would be the amount that you would approve reserving for next year. You'll see that down in a box um, toward the bottom after the dashed lines. And what that is is we budgeted $80,000 and this is the part of that that we had not spent this year that we were asking permission tonight to reserve for a future plans for job coaching. Okay. Um, the line above that is um, another reservation that we would ask that you make tonight with regard to case management. Um, we receive money um, for managing um, students who are state placed and this money is money that we're receiving this year that would fund a position next year to do the case management. So we're asking you to reserve the cash that we have on hand for this year for a position for next year to do case management. This is the 19000 This is the 45543 Yeah, it's down by the job oh, coaching you. reservation. Mm -hmm. All right. Gotcha. And at this time, I mean, our fund balance is looking pretty close to on track as last month. And I know, depending on what you do with the contract, for, um, the bill said he wants to discuss later with regard to job classifications and um, Wages um, is close to how we think we're going to end the year. There will be some swings um, for the HRA to cover some of our out-of-pocket costs. That'll come through in the next report, um, but it should be dollar for dollar. So again, the effective fund balance should be zero. Any questions on that page, or are you ready to switch? Can I just highlight something there, Lori? Mm -hmm. If you look at the total expense, the total year, so total current year operations, we're about four. Tell me if I'm wrong here, but about 114,000 below the budget right now. And that's based on those two reservations we're asking you to make, yeah. which are like 87,000. So that. that's included in there. So what we're, is the, what's the what is the uh, difference on that? Well, so I'm saying the difference between what our budget is and what we spend. No, what I mean is, yeah, what is what is 14? Is I mean, was that because of I mean, what? Why? Or All the adjustments it? that you see up above, and savings and, and increased revenues and all that gives us uh, 114 less than the budget. No, I mean, so you didn't have anything that was below in the projection. I mean, how much of that 114 was based on the same projections? Last year's projections. That um, under, I think, these are all the under items. I, I think what he's saying is 27000 of that yeah. would have been the surplus after funding all of the okay, changes. We, you know, we had taken money out for the auditor that was yeah. beyond, and we had um, reserved money for our Act 46 study committee. Um, so 27 plus, if you're saying what's the real operating benefit, it would be 27 plus about 14. So That's close. You know, 41000 Good news. Mm -hmm. 
On the next um, side is our office equipment technology fund. And um, so the highlights I'd like to make there are that there's a box that has 132779 That would be our beginning balance projection for office equipment and technology, for future servers, et cetera. And we have a, a five-year capital plan, or actually I think it goes further than that. Um, so it, it's anticipated we'll need that in coming years. You'll see we've got 100000 reserved from this year's budget for the software. And that would bring the subtotal up to 232 if you add those numbers together. Our building fund, if you keep going down, has 78719 And our um, fiscal agent fee, which is pretty much serving community connections, has a balance of about $5,500, which looks like within another year we'll have to figure out um, how we would provide support to community connections when this fund gets depleted. Are we we're running it down regularly without? This has been a planned um, use of fund balance that we received from Community Connections from uh, many years ago. I see. Okay. And it did have an impact. Because uh, they don't have enough revenue and user fees to cover okay. fiscal operations. Okay. And can I ask for the for the software change? And I, I haven't been able to track the legislation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did that? Yeah, actually, it's in the budget bill. It's in the budget, okay. That's what we're going to talk about in the All report. Right. That's what right. I was going to go to talk about is that, that it's been in, it's not controversial. It's going to, if, if or when the budget passes, it'll probably most likely be in there. Okay. It's one of the most controversial things. I see. We've seen everyone to go to the same fiscal. So it's likely to It's happen. controversial outside the legislature, but in the legislature and the governor's <laughs> office. There. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions on the financial report? Yeah. Comments? <clears throat> Thanks, Lori. Okay, thank yeah. you. Um, do you want to stay for the software comments? Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do that. So the superintendent's report is on page nine. We're going to speak to part of that. Yeah, I was going to speak to the start, and I'll let Lori add more details as she's been part of the financial software transition in the state. Um, and you'll see on page 11, memorandum that's on March 30th that came out. Um, at that point on March 30th, Laura, you can help me if I remember this incorrectly, but um, the state had selected software as a choice whether to go in. Uh, somewhere around the end of March, beginning of April timeline, um, the Senate I don't know if it was that. I can't remember right now if it was the House Ed, the Senate Ed Chair, Phil, Senator Philip Ruth, or the Senate Pro Term. I can never say this. Pro Term. Pro Term, thank you. Um, whether Tim Ash, if he had put it in that they want everyone to be on the same fiscal software, it's, it is, it's not well liked by the field because 80% of the field is in a different software that's already been paid for. So they're going to make everyone transition to this piece of software. Um, we, as you know, we're putting aside to go into, um, to purchase, to go into bidding, do an RFP, do a bidding process for a new piece of fiscal software. Two years from now. Um, but we still see uses, and you'll hear later on as we talk about other things, um, that money, we're not seeing the support that needs to be there to put that software in place right now. So, Laura, I probably took some away some of your no, thunder. That's fine. Uh, yeah. But Laura's been, she was part of the committee that started selecting fiscal software, looking at them, partnering with the state. Um, and then she transitioned over to other things. So maybe you can give some more details there mm -hmm. what I missed. Um, when the state went up to bid, they had um, four vendors bid. One was disqualified, and we reviewed the other three components. <coughs> One of the three was the vendor who has 84% of the schools right now. Um, and the other vendor, I think I just said one was disqualified, called Focus. So Tyler and Power School were the two left. Power School currently has no um, schools in Vermont on their system. This is their first um, time implementing this software in Vermont, as well as 
on a system-wide basis. Um, they have a couple schools in New England, and um, the committee has been reaching out to some of those schools. There's a couple in New Hampshire um, to find out what, how did it go. So the schedule you see on page 12, a couple schools are in round one. Um, some of them have withdrawn from that because they're merging and decided to stay with their current software. But I think there's less than four going up. And when they say they're going live October 1, they're actually only using the software for their budget for the following year. Okay, live January 1st is a couple more schools. Um, and I don't know of anyone going up on round three uh, at this time, but again, they don't have to tell me, they tell the agency. So basically how it happens is a letter gets sent to the agency, you get put on the list, and um, they will say that they're, they reserve some money for every SU. So there is some money in our name. I think it's only like $35,000, which isn't a lot. Um, if we were going up um, by November 30 is supposedly the last date uh, for round four, and I've asked them if they would consider kicking that can down the road a little further, um, because you know, it, it's kind of a tight window. To say you're going live on November 30 and then go live on July 1, there's a lot more behind the scenes than what people have realized. And so I think as they've implemented round one for that group, they're gonna learn more. Um, they've had um, quite a few variations in schools that are jumping on. So they have some, like Barry, is going in round one as far as I know, unless they withdraw. Um, but they are still a um, supervisory union with four entities. And they're expecting to be merging down the road, so how the software would then take care of that problem remains to be seen, but they said that they could somehow come up with a way so that it's not so much work for the staff. Um, we implemented, we were given a uniform chart of accounts by the Agency of Ed in January, and I implemented um, the bulk of that this spring already. So we're starting to work toward implementation, no matter what the software is. We're working toward getting our books up and running with what the state's asking us to do. Because if you can do some prep ahead, merging is not, I mean, changing software is not as complicated. Um, we're also going to be making more changes next fiscal year. The state just changed a number of the things they had given us for that uniform chart of accounts. Um, I think some of it's to meet the new software. I think they've gone from 32 characters, maybe even as many as 36 in each number. Hmm. So I'm still figuring that out. Um, they are giving deadline extensions to anyone who is merging under Act 46. So even though it says here, go live July 1, they're giving other people extensions in the law if they've approved going forward with Act 46 for merging. Um, as Bill said, the state is budgeting, and I think it's only like 35000 an SU to pay for this. Um, that money... Um, Outside the software cost. Right? No, that's all they're budgeting for our share of power school's total bid. So that includes the cost of the software itself, which is presumably includes licensing and True. installation or something like it's that. It's a cloud-based system. Cloud -based. Oh, so you don't have to pay as much for licensing because you're just pretty much paying an annual sure. fee. But is that, that like a per, per user fee or something? Or like that? Um, it's actually kind of optimistic, so I don't want to get off on a negative tone here. Um, <laughs> but the software purchase outright was going to be over 100000 If you uh -huh. picked any other vendor, and this vendor seems to go in low, and I let them know that. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Um, I think the difference is um, this software has more web-based training and less... Um, user-based training. Mm -hmm. Either way, you do have to pay for conversion, so um, there is time that people will need to be doing their jobs and to be converting at the same time, so there would be additional staff needed, irregardless of whether we'd be paying for software or not. Um, I think Bill already mentioned the budget hasn't passed yet at the state, um, and it, the system hasn't been tested tried and true, so we will know more, I think, within the next six months on how this is going at the state level. And we'll keep you updated. So the, summer, the summary I would give is that Laura and I are very confident that we're going to need more personnel time because there wasn't anything in there. So though we have we had that in our original three hundred thousand dollar budget that we had for our own implementation, we've been setting some of that money aside. We also I will not I would be I would say that we also probably should be thinking about using some of that for train extra training 
the question is, will they have extra trainers because this is a pretty small financials package compared to the other competitors who are much larger firms. And Power School is a big piece, but Power School financials are a very small mm -hmm. piece of software. Uh, so that all the, the, the um, anyone that's used to hearing there, they're the largest student information system in the nation, but they're very tiny financially. So the number of trainers they have is probably not that great. So we've got to figure that out as well. So, can I ask why this is on the agenda? Is this just for informational purposes? It's for informational purposes, okay. but. You know, we're going to be. So we're going with this. Um, I can't tell you that I'm 100 percent there. I want to know that the state, you know, if the state if they may enact it in law, then we're going with it. Um, then if they don't, then I'll come back to you with a cost benefit analysis of purchasing our own or going with the state solution. But we we were thought we were yeah. going to come with a cross. I mean, Tim Ash put it in, and, and it was. Required. And it's not an option it's, anymore. And he says it is straight from him. He, he says it's straight from him, and he says this in public open meetings that it's because he's asked for financial information from the education field, and he doesn't get it. He gets apples and oranges. He said that we're going to fix this. Mm -hmm. We're going to put one system on you. And the state has said that they aren't going to pay for it forever. So when you just said, what would there be fees? There will be annual fees. I mean, the other. Some sure. of the fees could be twenty-five thousand dollars a year on going costs going forward after the implementation. That would be local budget, according to what we were told. Yeah, I was. I mean, I, it's not a, a really critical question from the board perspective. I think I was just trying to wrap my head around, like you know, what. I think we had sort of, uh, uh, Bill, you had sort of estimated a figure of something like three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and I didn't know yeah. if that was all. Mm -hmm. Kind of extra staff or transition, or if it, if it, there was, I, I guess I'm assuming if this is going to be implemented statewide, then even if we had extra money to, you know, ask Power School is the name of it yeah. to provide extra training or resources, they might not be able to because right. they're going to be so busy dealing with every different yeah. district, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I was just trying to get a sense of mm -hmm. like what the what the plan is for that money, I guess. But again, I don't think it's really a critical. I think for us, it's really more for. You know, I conducted a survey of my peers um, and found that it takes about maybe three thousand hours of training, implementation, and crossover. And that's what I got for four different supervisor unions. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, there's equipment, so scanners, and things like that that you don't currently have that help automate the system. So it will be equipment. Um, what else do we come up with, Bill? It's cost of converting. Oh, you also have. Um, Consultant fees, we have to pay you know, say Nemeric to run programs to pull stuff out because you don't know, rekey every transaction. Yeah, sure. So there's there's cost. <laughs> it's just a matter of which way are we gonna go and, and we just want to let you know where we are now. Yeah. What is your you. gut with this? Is it a good move, the software, or is it a bad move? Is it It was not my first choice. <laughs> I represent the principals and the leadership team and they asked me to represent them to find the right software. And the other software had more bells, whistles, barcode scanning when you get a fixed asset, so it's already in the system, that kind of stuff, instead of keeping it. Do you deal individually with Power School after this, or is there like a government yeah, structure that you have to go through AOE or agency of digital services? The agency's in charge of the charter accounts. So I'm not quite sure they were still hashing over if I needed a new account and it wasn't in the system. Do I have the ability to do it myself, yeah. or do I have to wait until they come up with a number and put it in? They really wanted to control the chart of accounts because of what you just said. The legislature wants data, and um, if everyone creates their own account numbers, they felt like that wasn't going to make the system successful. So, I mean, yeah, we're somewhat at the mercy of what the state does. Um, we've been talking about this for a while, preparing for it, if you appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll see after they get done doing what it is they're doing exactly where we are <laughs> when we come yeah. back next year. Okay. But I appreciate the uh, yeah. update and information. Okay. So are there any other questions about this before we move on? Okay. I think we can set Lori free. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you.
<laughs> You're welcome to stay. Yeah, exactly. Stay. <laughs> we say that to everyone, but somehow nobody ever takes us up on it. <laughs> Okay. So I'm going to turn this. Turn it off. I'll turn it off because I just don't like the cold on the turn off. That's wrong. I don't. I think no. I think, I think it's too. I think it's cool enough. Yeah, I would say. If you get hot, tell me, and I'll turn it back off. You just said. So let's go to two point two to talk about the SU board retreat, and I'm. I'm sorry I don't have this in writing, but I will just describe to the committee uh, what Stephen and Flora and myself and Bill have done in terms of researching uh, options for the retreat and, and kind of the recommendation that we wanted to bring to the executive committee to, um, not asking you for a formal decision, but wanted to get your input and your assent. Um, so as we discussed at our last executive committee meeting, we've been looking into the possibility of engaging uh, experts who might be able to advance our thinking with regard to uh, our goals two and three. Goal two being focused on student learning in particular and goal three being focused on community engagement. Uh, so we contacted uh, experts in both those areas for goal two in student, student learning. Uh, it's Nate Levinson uh, who uh, works at District Management Group in Massachusetts. Uh, Nate worked with a team to do a study for the state of Vermont a couple of years ago uh, on student learning and particularly on the issue of um, how uh, Vermont is doing with regard to um, services and investments to address um, you know, what's commonly referred to as the achievement gap. Uh, and he spoke at the VSBA board chair training that uh, Chris and myself and Bill attended in, in May and made an impression. Um, and what he was saying seemed quite relevant to many of the topics that we as an SU have discussed over the last couple of years regarding student learning. So we thought he might um, be a good, good person to bring in. Uh, he is available on August 2nd. Um, the cost for engaging him all in, including his fee and travel and, and uh, expenses, would be $4,800. Um, That's actually down on Friday. It's 45. 4,500, yeah. okay. Trying to get the consistency across the state. Gotcha. Because he's worked with many and there are many more. Like, okay. He work. Okay. Uh, we also contacted, uh, for the community engagement piece, we contacted Public Agenda. Uh, Public Agenda is uh, an organization that did the community engagement training for VSBA in April that uh, Stephen and Floor and Chani from Waterhouse. Oh, Dorothy, I'm sorry. Uh, Dorothy and Chani Scott. Waterhouse attended. Scott was there too? Yep. Oh, great. Um, very well received, and people, I think, uh, felt they got a lot out of that, that training. Uh, so we talked to them. Uh, they had a slight schedule conflict. They said they could rearrange their schedule to be available on August 2nd if we wanted them. Uh, the cost to have them come for the day uh, all in, including travel and expenses, is $4,000, so it's pretty similar. Um, and in weighing the two options, uh, the group that was asked by the SU board to work on this, our, our recommendation is that we go with the, the student learning topic. Um, we felt like you know, student learning is basically our primary reason for being as an educational system. Um, and so that's really where we should sort of put our first um, efforts and in investment. Um, so that's the, that's the recommendation. We, we also discussed a little bit the amount of time we were going to have and whether we could do more than one topping, and it didn't really seem like we could do justice to more than one of those topics in, a, in, a, in just a day or part of a day. Um, so we wanted to just focus on one of them. Um, in terms of where the retreat would be, we talked, there's not a lot of options. We talked about maybe trying to, to use Visbit, their, uh, their facility in Berlin, um, which can hold the number of people we'll have and at least is offsite from our SU, um, but not providing kind of like extravagant outdoor hiking opportunities, which is one um, sort of impression I got. People were hoping we might be able to have. Berlin Pond is right nearby. Um, and then in terms of timing, we were kind of up in the air on that. Um, 
because we know that some of the district boards have discussed um, the possibility of trying to piggyback meetings on this retreat day um, and whether that was feasible or not. Um, so that was a, a question we had not yet resolved. So basically the recommendation or the re and the request for your input um, and assent is is regarding engaging someone because we want to we want to reserve someone their schedules will fill up if we don't act to do that um, so just your thoughts about uh, you know what I laid out there so. I'll just <clears throat> share with the group that when when I saw him down in uh, at Lake Maury it connected a lot of dots for me and um, just really very engaging as a speaker and uh, provocative and I'd really like to hear, hear him again. I think a lot of the board members would get a lot out of the discussion about student learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it was really good. It was just a short presentation as well, so I had to be a little longer than me. He did the next day, we had a team down there with the administrator, with some of the administrators, Stephen, Alicia, Bill Dice, Kelly, and myself. And we spent in a six hour, six to seven hour session and talking with him on Friday. He has different places you can go. And he said, Bill, I can maybe move. He said, I don't think that hour and a half is enough. Kind of talking about what our, objective, but our objectives are, but he said four, six, you know, six hours is a day. So, and Nicole, I think, said to you that six hours for the. She said six hours was was necessary, was basically, necessary. to do the do her topic justice. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's how we try. We're trying to get. And Nate has some pieces on, you know, what he's going to talk about is um, the way we're staffing our buildings to reach student objectives, as you saw. And one of the things you didn't see that's been getting a lot of traction with, he's working with 10 SUs in the state, but is, um, we're all seeing escalating costs for behavioral supports. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got some interesting data on how to do that, too. Mm -hmm. Stephen, did you have anything else you wanted to add, or no? No. Okay. I think doing learning objectives is the right way to go. Yeah. Okay. Great. We'll move forward with that then. Mm -hmm. Talk with Nate. He wanted to have, I, you know, as I said to you, I don't know if I got this to Stephen in Florida, or I just don't remember, recall this weekend, um, was um, he must have, and we can figure this out afterwards, but a time to do a planning meeting. Yeah. Great. Okay. And somewhere I saw eight to five. That to me sounds like a really long day. Yeah. Again, I that we, we haven't really sort of settled okay. on the time. I, you know, I agree. Eight to five, eight to five is a really long day. Yeah. yeah I would. It I would like agree. A long with, day to sit uh, and yes. take in information. Agreed. Um, um, my two cents worth. Yeah. And I mean, I I don't think that. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but I don't think that our vision of this has been that we would come in, sit down, and discuss all day. <laughs> like no, a, I you know, know what I mean. But, so, that's still but the other the other pieces of kind of what exactly we would do and, and uh, how to facilitate that are still a little bit up in the air. So, but we wanted to get kind of this cornerstone or anchor piece in place so that we could build around it essentially. So, yeah. I might recommend um, <clears throat> for a planning meeting. That perhaps we would bring Kari in because of his experience working in that subcommittee. Okay. I mean, does that sound? I just think he would bring a lot of. Yeah, that's a good idea. Topic specific right. expertise when you're trying to plan through what we're Sure, doing. sure. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, thank you. Let's uh, let's move on to, to board goals. We may be able to dispense with this pretty quickly. Um, I know kind of what happened with all the district boards regarding uh, adopting the goals that the SU board did at our June 6 meeting, except for one board, uh, which is Callis. So I, I wasn't able to sort of discern or figure out maybe what, if anything, you guys might have done. So not to put you on the spot, I just wanted to ask if you remembered remembered what happened what i remember is we talked about it. i guess we probably didn't have an official vote but that's what you're looking for yeah, yeah i just was but curious I think they kind of went along with everything. yeah i don't think there would, i don't think there'll be a problem yeah so. okay um 
my sense, or uh, I know, I know that out of the six district boards, only one actually took, uh, actually adopted the goals formally. Uh, the other five did not. Um, there were varying but similar reasons, I think, in each case. Um, I think in in almost no cases were the goals uh, actually on the agenda for the district boards to consider or to act on. Um, and then in some cases also, uh, boards did not have their full complement of board members and felt yeah. it was important to have everybody there to discuss and to, to resolve. Um, so that's kind of where we are. You know, I think it's uh, a somewhat, um, uh, what's the word like, um, not as unanimous an outcome, I guess, as I would have hoped for, you know. My, my sense also is that, is that also the boards that at least discussed the goals, none of them expressed any reservations or kind of um, objections to adopting them, just no particular urgency about, <laughs> about doing that. Um, so... My recollection of Mark is he had a, a new member, and we also had, were, had been trying to set a retreat date for ourselves. Mm. And so that's what it resolves around as much as anything. I can't remember if we adopted it or we, not. We, but we put. Uh, I saw the, I saw I'm sorry. Who used the adoption? What? What's that? Who, which board do you The East Montpelier board adopted. adopted them, yeah. And the Doty board, which I did not attend, did not adopt them. I did attend the Rumney meeting. And, uh, we were close, but yeah, yeah. we had a new member as well, and only three of us yeah. there. So we yeah. made, I think there's consensus toward doing it, but right. it's just not yet. I don't foresee a lot of problem in Calus. No, no. I think it's going to be. No, you said you two definitely said yes. We're just thinking we'll have another one. Yeah. Also. So yeah, I just wanted to review kind of what happened. Um, you know, I'll confess um, to being a little surprised by that outcome and a little bit disappointed by it. Um, I don't think it's that, I guess I, I wanna try to split the difference. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I don't think it's a small deal either. Um, it's kind of a, you know, I sort of, in reflecting on it, sort of thought about it as a, as a kind of interesting data point in, you know, our attempts to operate together um, I'm not as a sure school it was system. On our action agenda. It was not. It was not. So that's why we didn't, I think that's yeah. why we didn't vote. I understand. I yeah. yeah, I understand. But I think that the fact that it didn't make it onto agendas also sort of was quizzical to me in a way. Um, but, uh, and I didn't, I thought, you know, maybe I should have, you know, done more reaching out to the board chairs or, you know, talking to, to Bill and Krista about it or, that's, that's um, what or, about or pushing here to, but I don't want the boards to, um, you know, I just sort of understand what you're saying, but, uh, but I also, you know, don't really feel like the boards um, should be relying in essence on the administration to kind of set their agendas either. You know, we sort of, we have this challenge in a way of how do we organize ourselves and, you know, hold ourselves to, um, you know, kind of timelines and that's what sort of the attempt to put goals in place really is. In the, in the first place. Um, I think we need to get some clarity around that then, because I think, if anything, I think there's confusion. Like with, we don't know when, you know, when those are kind of being automatically put on to move forward. Yeah, I guess I want to be able to do it. Maybe I think that's, we don't have any problem moving I, that forward. Yeah, I wanted to raise it up. I didn't want to like take too much time talking about it tonight, but I guess I did want to, I think the executive committee is where a lot of this agenda setting stuff happens and you know we really count on I think executive committee members to to carry that work you know back to their boards and be ambassadors for but it. But not all executive committee, committee members, members are board chairs. No it's true and um, and I, I actually think if you tell Krista then I get a draft of what she puts together and I can say what is this where did it come from. Yeah. I definitely will do that next time, yeah. for sure. Because yeah, she's, no question. she's sort of the keeper of all the agendas. Yeah. Right, and right. If you want it to get on all of them. Yeah. So I, I was going to say, it's I'm letting Matt talk, and he and I talked about this already. You know, that's my role as superintendent to make sure things make it from meetings to the next meeting. You know? And so 
Yeah, I'm, I'm actually not comfortable with that. I know that. you're not comfortable with that. <laughs> I know you don't like that. You didn't like it when I told it to you two weeks ago. <laughs> that's, you know, but that's part of what the superintendent, I mean, we do is we, I mean, Chris and I literally sit down after each meeting and say what, what we want the to-do list. So yeah, I, I, that works really well for me <coughs> because I'm, you know, two weeks or a month, I might lose things and I might, yeah. forget. I might not have been here and not even known that that was an expectation. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, I, if anything, I think if we're going to do that with uh, those items and, and we're going, we're responsible for going right to the chair, but let's say that in the meeting, we'll say, okay, everybody. You have to take this to your And then maybe an email needs to come yeah, out from we'll you, do it. you know, yep. writing. That way we know. Sure. I, I kind of took it for granted that that was going to just yeah, yeah, sure. move forward sure. on. And then we would act or not act on We would act on what we would vote yay or nay. As right, right. That's what we discussed. Yeah, no, I understand. And I, um, just clarity. It sort of seems obvious in retrospect, but didn't seem at all obvious to me, you know, in it beforehand. I, I, guess, wouldn't, so. I wouldn't take it. No, I don't. It's, it's more, I, yeah. I really don't. I mean, I know okay. it seems like this has been like a personal passion project of mine. Um, but in a way, I just sort of see it as a kind of um, stating our intention to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. It seems important. The, the, <laughs> so. other, the other pieces, we yeah. were all set to have a board retreat, and we were told to wait until after August 2nd. We had one scheduled for May, and we had to change it, but yeah. when we tried to reschedule it, kind of the word was wait until after the board retreat, yeah. and everybody's doing it then. Yeah, no, no, it's and been a bit of a disruption. we have never done it that late. We yeah. always do it in May or June. Yeah. We appreciate you postponing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, sounds good. So I think, like, if something like that comes up again where we're hoping that the districts will all act in concert at our personal meeting, like, you know, it's really incumbent on the executive committee and me and, and Bill and Krista trying to make sure that that, that happens. Oh, no, yeah, let's just, I mean, let's just, we'll, if when those items come up, we'll just, we'll just say it here and clearly, I mean, I was kind of bad assumption on my part. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So we'll just, I, I, I was wondering about having... A board meeting we have, one of our items is what's on the next agenda, and maybe that can be an ending part of this, is what do, you, what do we want our individual boards to put on the agenda? Well, I definitely want to be sure it's on, on people's agendas for August, since that's the next time that the district board will meet. So for sure, we want to make sure that, uh, so I guess I'm throwing that out to the group to and to myself uh, in Dodie's case to make sure that, that that happens. So I'm going to skip over 2.4. I assume we want to come to that last because it's probably going to require an executive session uh, for us. Uh, and that will put us in 2.5, which is the uh, letter to the SBA. So I have a new copy of, from what I emailed you earlier that we were finishing this up. I should have to do it like this. Maybe we can hand one to figuring out the around. This letter I will say is one that um, I yeah, there's an extra here that Lisa can have. I'm sure I print ten, ten copies. Um, this has started the past three or four weeks. Um, superintendents have been talking about is let me actually step back even further. As many of you are aware of, um, we had changed our health care system in July 1 to where we had a high deductible plans where there were health care reimbursement accounts that went to teachers. Um, we had elected to go with a firm, Future Planning Associates, to manage our HRA. On March 30th, they notify us that they were going to cease to do business with us for the contract that could give us a 60-day warning. And they actually, and they, we had been seeing problems with the administration of the plan before that. Um, and there's a whole story behind that. I'm not going to go there of issues. But they were, they had a subcontractor that ran all the, like, the data system in the background, the electronics of it, and the software piece of it. Um, with debit cards. That didn't work uh, very well, and so on 
April 1st, the firm that was running the debit cards and the electronic system and that was processing payments electronically called DataPack took over the work. They have recovered other failures in other states around the nation, Missouri being one of them, where a company said they could manage something for a big public institution, whether it be a collegiate municipality or education system, and then went defunct. So they're currently going back through all the medical records for about 50% of, of the educators in the state of Vermont right now, because there's two different companies that service the HRAs. Um, and there have been a lot of double payments to vendors. So a, a physician may have received two payments instead of one. There have been lack of payments. We have a couple teachers that, more than a couple now, that have been received collection notices. Um, we've had to put a lot of personnel time here in Virginia, and between Virginia and Laurie, there are definitely one F extra FTE work coming out of their work, um, just trying to help our own personnel. We've had, um, we had to go into, back into negotiations with the association, and that has gotten contentious. And Susanna's, I can call her, and she can come in and give some more on this piece on this letter. It's uh, 640. I forgot we were going to try yeah. to get her in at six, but yeah, uh, I do too. Okay, let me see if I can get her. Susanna is who? Susanna Culver is our head of negotiations. She's been <coughs> oh, okay. right in the middle of this the whole time. So let me call her. Can we talk about more clarity around this? Yeah. Because there were there were bidders for this position for this for the HRA. Yeah. No. You are like a future planning associate's responsibility. They've yeah. been doing it for years. They were, yeah, they were. And they were, it was done on through. I know. Hi, Susanna. Sorry we're late. Well, that's all right. I know how it goes. I lost track of time. I already started an introduction of where we're at. And I kind of got to the point of we started to negotiate with the association. Okay. Susanna's been intimately involved in this future planning. To go back to Stephen, you were asking were there bidders for this. Actually, VHI certified only two firms, Future Planning and Health Equity. And Future Planning, for what we negotiated with a teacher, was the only firm that could handle the type of debit cards in the way we want them to be paid out, which meant that Health Equity would run the debit card if, um, if the employer's contribution was spent first. And future equity, future planning gave us an option of if you want the employee's money to be spent first, you could go with them. About 50% of the supervisor unions districts in the state of Vermont went with them because they wanted the employee money first or they had some other configuration that future planning said they could deliver on. What we have found out is that even they couldn't handle that. It, it's just accounting for all those pieces of money. So it's, it's we have, we have a lot of folks across the state and within our own SU that it's hard to detangle where their payments are between their own contributions to the HRA, our contributions, have health folks been paid properly. We put a lot of our own staff. I already talked about Suzanne about the amount of time Virginia and Laurie have been putting to this. Oh, they've been, they've been wonderful, but we're killing them slowly. We're more than slowly now. They're 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 over it. They're they're ready to be done. Um, and so we had to go back and negotiate with their association. So Susanna and Chani took up that lead. Uh, we were going to try and do it under the guise of a labor management. Um, and tomorrow, hopefully, there'll be a ratification of a memorandum of understanding. But I don't know how much more you want to go into that, Susanna. Well, I think I think that that's that's part of. Part of the issue that's come up with, I mean, this, this, this whole problem has, has damaged our credibility and our leverage and our, our relationship with, with the people we negotiate with. And that, that's very difficult to overcome. And, and we're going to have to overcome it this, this fall when we step back to the table. Uh, we are hoping that they will say yes tomorrow in their vote. But there's no guarantee to that. Uh, but but we, we work very hard, so we, we think they will. We think, we think we're going to get a yes vote, and that will take us until the end of December. And in the interim, 
we're going to work very hard to find a way through this maze that future planning has has delivered to us so nicely. Um, so should we step right into the letter? What were the letter? Yeah, with the FBA. Yeah, you and I have been talking about this. Um, John Pandolfo, the uh, superintendent at Barry, has been the superintendent's um, liaison to the to a healthcare task force that's made up of five people. It's not part of Beehive, but looking at what should be done with healthcare after last year was called for by the legislature. Um, and he's probably the most he's probably has the most detailed and comprehensive knowledge of healthcare in the state of Vermont of all the superintendents. And he and I, and like I said, there's probably about five or six of us. We know there's going to be more. So last Thursday, he took I, he took this he wrote this letter and took it to his board to the very school district um, and the very supervisor union will look at it this week to uh, approve this letter to be sent to VSBA to have VSBA start putting together you know how can we work together and possibly bring class action lawsuit against future planning associates there we have as you saw in the draft I just put three hundred thousand dollars in there but after Laura did some great quick accounting this afternoon, it's about $293,000 we've paid out so far. That doesn't include any of the staff time. We've got people losing their credit ratings that are uh, employees around here. They've got debit, they've got collecting agencies on them. And we have, uh, as Suzanne just said, I think, and the things the most valuable is our relationship with the association. It's gonna be hard to, to tally up all the damages. It really is. So, so uh, Susan, this is Steve Look. The reason I asked the question earlier about the initial uh, contract with Future Planning Association, I was at the School Boards Association negotiating training three, four weeks ago. I can't be that precise in the week, but in the spring. <clears throat> um, and it was discussed there that the reason future planning associates was hired was because the association insisted on it. That wasn't done at the negotiation table for us. You don't remember that? No, I mean, no, I mean, I state, don't, I mean I statewide. I mean, statewide. Uh, insisting on that. I mean, I... No, statewide, the Vermont NEA wanted first planning associates. Yeah, I, See, I, we're, we're, we're unique because of the type of negotiations we do. Yeah. Anyways, there was a long discussion about it, and the discussion there was this is going to come up in issues and districts, and future planning was hired because the Vermont NEA insisted they be hired. So, and there was discussion at that point that um, many um, school board association felt that they would not be up to the task. They were too small, and they cautioned against it. And then the NAA insisted that that be the group that get hired. Well, I, I cautioned against it, but only because I was so familiar with health equity, and I was very comfortable with health equity. But as it turned out, health equity could not work within the system that we were asking them to work with. You know, first dollars being paid by um, by the association members was critical in our negotiating process. Well, and I don't think we would have ever wanted to give that up. Yeah. And we may have to look at a different formula to find a, a management company that's, that's going to be able to handle this. But you know, first dollars, 10%, we're looking at 250 dollars individual, 500 for a family. Those are not large dollars, but they are dollars that never existed before. So, you know, they had that to look forward to, the association members did. And then with future planning, not being able to keep up with those payments and reimbursements of any dollars thereafter, it, it's been it's been very very difficult for them. But I don't think we'll want to give that up. But we have to find someone who can 
who can manage that system. Well, and maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. I was just mentioning it from the negotiating point. You may want to contact School Boards Association to get some additional information um, because the suggestion there was um, school boards shouldn't be eating the... the the, fa the failure of the system because it was it was the stance that it was going to fail and they didn't want to go with it. But that's not pertinent to the letter. So that was just some information for the negotiating side. So are we being asked to okay this letter? Yeah, is that the purpose that's of what I'd like this? to do is to get this letter to VSBA to help with this, uh, their other superintendents as well. We're taking this draft to say, let's start putting together this request of VSBA. They represent the school boards. Let's see if they can start at least there before we go ask our own council that we pay. I mean, there may be still have to pay some to VSBA to do this. I don't know, but at least start with what can they do to support the school boards. Can I ask what, do you have a, Susanna or Bill, like do you have a sense of what's the likelihood we actually would recover any damages? I mean, if, if Future Planning Associates is a small company, one that's on the rocks at best, perhaps, um, you know, is there, if there were a judgment in favor of the SUs signing on to a class action lawsuit, like, would there be any money to recover, or? Well, they manage other organizations besides public schools. Okay. And they do this, they manage, um, 125 plans, they manage FSAs, they, uh, so they do some other pieces for payroll contributions. For and they have been doing health healthcare for schools for a while. For a while. This yeah. wasn't their first shot at it. Yeah, they used to do it under other plans that were health under We BI. used them yeah. for years. Yeah. So. Okay, I just wanted to ask. I, so I don't know how much, you know, if they had a huge suit, how, I don't know what their liquidity is, liquidity is or, right, right. Uh, or assets. Okay. Well, I think it's one way of saying to the association that the school boards, it's not their fault. You know, it's something that happened and it's really disappointing that it affects a relationship when it wasn't the school board's fault. You know, it's just something that happened. Um, and for the association not to be able to understand, it was kind of beyond the school board's control. It's a lot. I hope it come to that realization. Yeah, and, and there are some, and I have to say, yeah. Suzanne, you and I know there are some that are that know that realization. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And so I want to say that as well. Um, there's different philosophies that we all come at with, and I say we, everybody comes out with healthcare. There isn't one that's winning the tie, and so there are different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So relative to the letter. Um, my only observations mm -hmm. is I'm, uh, I support the concept and I support most of the letter. I just think the letter uses the word we too frequently. Okay. So in other words, I think there are times when we should say, um, and I'm looking at I don't know, a third or fourth sentence, instead yeah. of while we in many other systems, we should say, while Washington Central Supervisory Union and many other systems, yeah, that, that, I think we should get rid of, mm -hmm. so for instance, we know for a fact, if, if Washington Central Supervisory Union knows that for a fact, we should say WCSU. Yeah. I just think that's, yeah. in my mind, it, it clears it up. Yeah, we can, we can clear that up. And then the only other thing that I had was either is it going to say the Washington Central Supervisor Union Board at the end, or is it going to say the Executive Committee of the Washington Central Supervisor Union Board respectfully requests? Those are the only two things that I made any notes on. Well, I think it should be the Executive Committee because it hasn't gone to the board yet, right? To the whole board. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. And if we wait for the full board, when's that? Or, well, Matt, when we would get it Wednesday. Matt is also we have a forum on Wednesday, right? 
We do. It's not on the agenda, not on the warrant agenda for us to discuss I, it. To but, me, uh, it, it, wasn't, just, it wasn't here tonight either, so. It just seemed, well, there are times when you can vote on things that aren't on the No, I think the action agenda is sort of our use of it is a convention. It's not a legal requirement, so we can add, just, we can add things to it if we want. It if we want. just seem more precise if we say the executive committee of Washington. I know it might not carry the same weight, but then we could follow this up. Yeah, I don't know, Bill. Do you have any thoughts about that, or? I don't think either way. I mean, I think if you just, I mean, your your bylaws allow you to take whatever action you want. As the executive committee, I think we've been trying to transition out of that, which is what I think Stephen's pointing. Right. If you want the board, then you go to the board. If you want the executive committee, I think either way to get something to VSBA this week to say, hey, you need to start. And as Floor said to me, because this went out, I sent out the whole list, and she's Stephen's backup, and she's the, one of the VSBA reps. She said, make sure your VSBA reps, mm -hmm. which is Lucas Herring out of the Berry Board is one of them. So, you know, they have the copies of these letters to take to the VSBA board to say, hey. You know what, this isn't, actually, this isn't actually saying the whole board. It's just saying Matthew. But right. speaking on behalf of WCSU, so yeah, I wouldn't want to do that, that last, without that at least last. some, uh, you know, at least uh, the assent of the executive committee or oh, the board to, to do that. So do we know yet how many um, SUs were actually affected? Is there a number behind that? Um, we, I only have the percentage right now. I haven't gotten to try to get the number. Okay. Um, but, you know, why don't I just put executive committee in there? Yeah. It's fine, yeah. I mean, we can either do it that way or we could, uh, you know, vote to make a recommendation to the SU board and we can put it on the agenda on Wednesday. I mean, I don't... I don't we we'll take up more time for that meeting. Yeah, that is a concern. I'm comfortable with it either way, but if people want to, let Steve and I take your point that we've been trying to make sure that the, the, full, the SU board... Um, weighs in on things that... Well, my thinking was I could support it either way. Okay. Executive committee makes it precise. Okay, let's do um, that then. But I also thought it would be reasonable, I mean, it's a reasonable assumption, I think, on our parts that our boards would support this. Mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely that a board would say no. So we could do it either way. Okay. Are there any other comments on the letter regarding wording or content? No, it's good. Okay, I mean, I'm sensing, uh, so I guess I would suggest that we move it here and then we'll inform the SU board on Wednesday uh, that we did it. Um, that being the case, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Oh, actually, do you want to do it on the all right so. Oh, I don't move. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Sorry about that. So moving to uh, authorize uh, sending uh, a letter to the VSBA urging action regarding future planning associates uh, as amended, I'll say. So is there a second? Second. Who made it a motion? Uh, Dorothy moved. And did you decide to change it to Washington Central Supervisory? We, we did, to executive, oh, committee, executive I to, committee. I mean, no, so I'll, I'll And we're changing the, the we to, 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 uh, to WCSU. What's the more antecedents, less uh, pronouns, <laughs> I guess. I don't know um, why they, yeah, the doctoral student didn't come out with me. Because I would have like, no, you can't have that in there. <laughs> uh, is there any other discussion uh, regarding the motion? OK, hearing none, all those in favor of Authorizing the letter, uh, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, does anybody, I'm sure they have, help these people that have their... Yes, we're literally they're coming and sitting with Warrior Virginia Daily. We had two in here today. Susanna, thank you very much. Thanks, Girl, Susanna. Thank you for adding this to uh, an agenda that's probably only 50 at the last minute. We appreciate it. We love it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. All right, you too. Thanks. Okay. Uh, 
That brings us to 2.6, which is the Act 46 meeting on, on Wednesday. Um, with your permission, I want to say something uh, that I maybe should have said at the SU board about this. Um, uh, I've had some people reach out to me and express concern about this, this meeting and some of the ways it could go wrong and, and so on. So um, I guess I just wanted to, to say that I didn't really foresee a lot of potential in scheduling a meeting like this for um, disruption or, or sort of divisiveness. I think because my assumption has been that all six district boards uh, in the SU approved the AGS proposal. That is our collective policy document at the moment. Um, unless and until one of those or more of those boards reverses that position or changes its position, it remains our policy document. Uh, nothing that the AOE has done in its uh, analysis and recommendation changes that. Um, so it seems like the natural next step is for us to get ready to um, defend that proposal to the State Board of Education. Uh, I don't know this for sure, although my sense is that the date for that will be August 15th. Yeah, um, yeah that's it confirmed now? Yeah, okay. it was confirmed on Monday. Okay. Which is today. I did feel I knew that we wouldn't have time okay, to just. what came out. There were some things that were. I knew we wouldn't have time to discuss the, uh, um, the issue at the June 6th SU board meeting. I thought people would have things to say. I also thought it seemed appropriate for us to create a forum uh, to generate a public record of kind of where people are at as this whole process unfolds. Uh, that was the thinking behind um, asking the SU board uh, if it was interested in scheduling this, this special meeting on Wednesday. Um, so that's kind of how it came about. I have a couple of other things I could say editorially, but I don't, I'm before I, I want to open it up to the other group to say anything that might be on your minds before I would do that. Well, so. We discussed it at our, our meeting, uh, our local East Montpelier meeting afterwards, and there wasn't a lot of discussion, in a, and I'll say that I probably, I don't want to say dominated, I spearheaded the discussion. <laughs> Um, and I didn't hear objection, but so I'll say mine instead of East Montpelier. Um, I think what came out of our discussion is in, in, in our mind, in my mind, what's important for the meeting Wednesday uh, is developing um, a timeline and a process exactly the same way we did for the AOE. So in other words, we know and now there's a date um, we know we need to present to the Board of Education on the 15th. So in, in our mind, I can say our, in our mind it was who's going to present the same, the same scenarios, the same situations we discussed and jointly agreed upon on how are we going to present this to AOE, how are we now going to present this to the Board of Education. And um, piggybacking on what you said, it, it, not a not a meeting to re-examine what we want to do. It's just a continuation of the process of what was presented to the AOE. How are we now going to present this to the Board of Education? Who's going to do it? Um, exactly what's going to be shared? It, the exact same planning that went into the AOE should go into the Board of Education. And it, it becomes more of a uh, a structural planning meeting on how are we going to manage this process. Can we all agree that this group is going to be the group that talks to the board of education? Can we all agree that this is the information that's going to be shared? That kind of thing. But if, if um, I I really don't want to go through bashing the agency of education, bashing you know rehashing everything that caught, we've been there we've done that we you, you know we we know what we have to do next and I don't think we need to hear I personally don't think we need to hear about how people feel about one thing or the other or what the state board even said 
I just, okay. it, it's just so negative. It comes out, people are, get really angry. Yeah. Well, people have been ignored in this, and you're, I you're think they should be angry. You mean yes. the general public? I'm talking about the general public. And but that's the not, and the that's not who's angry. We're and hearing the, the same people saying the same things that we've been listening to for two years. Well, the question is, well, what would be the strategy? I mean, obviously it's going on deaf ears, and they're not listening to the boards. This is, you know, and what strategy works to turn them? I mean, it's kind of a political strategy now, because it's pretty clear that they're not going to, I mean, we know what their intent is, and, you know, they're going against, the, well, I know, but it's, it's crystal clear now. And I think the only thing that actually begins to provide that is, is a loud, is a pretty loud voice and something that kind of takes it out of that political highs, you know, because essentially that's what, it's the only thing you have to fight with. Well, I don't know what you think, Chris, but I've watched this happen before in a lot of places and this has been a kangaroo court, you know, pretty much all along. And I think we're going to expect more of that. You know, I think if we just play along quietly, it's, you know, we might just roll over and consolidate because that's what's going to happen. And I don't think that should be happening. You know, when you've had the kind of work that was put in by these communities for a couple of years, intense work, and we came up with, you know, and it's determined that this was clearly not going to work for us. And that I see it, if, if the discussion goes that way, it's going to blow up and run I agree. I, I don't know. Well, to me, it's not about ripping it. it. To me, that discussion needs to be one of the strategy. It doesn't need to blow up in that room. It needs to blow. Then there has to be to uniformity of strategy. And it has to and be a consolidated force. That doesn't exist. Yeah, I think the I think the issue. I think I think the there's a challenge on both sides of the the um, the, the problem or the what's happening. Um, you know, our, our AGS proposal was a, is a fragile, hard-won um, compromise that has unity of voice. Um, but I think our, it's fair to say that our, our boards are, remain, have been and remain fairly divided on some of the core issues. I think that what, um, and, and that's on both sides. I mean, you know, we heard some, some people starting to speak at our last SU meeting to the, to the fact that some on the board would prefer that we move more expeditiously in the direction of, well, one. of consult. Well, one, one person, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, I think other, others may have been more restrained in their uh, <laughs> sort of holding back from no, saying such things. But I think our, you know, what we have said in common is that we, um, you know, this, this is our best um, foot forward. This is what we all agree on. Um, we val and I think that we, set, by doing that, said that we value our unity of voice. Um, and perhaps, I guess, I could also say that, that we took a look at this and said, we don't feel like what the state is expressing as a preference is something that we as school districts can do to each other. Mm -hmm. That's how I would characterize some of the spirit of that AGS proposal. I agree. Um, so I think that on either side, if, if I think if people who are up in arms and incensed and want a strong um, fight and objection against what's happening are to bring that to the board discussion, or if folks that support uh, consolidation and merger for whatever reason bring that strong voice to the discussion that's where we're going to fracture um, I would say I would suggest and this is just my opinion um, I would suggest that if the opposition to what's happening uh, some feel needs to be very strong and very concerted um, that that's something that has to happen or would what it would best happen outside the board structure at this, well, this, time. this whole discussion, we're way beyond. We're way beyond that. That, dis that, that discussion and argument has already been had. And essentially, we as a group have been decided on a path. It, se it seems to me that the goal of this meeting is to figure out how we follow that path. It's not to fight back and forth again. This is, this is about... This is about... No, I think you misread 
Yeah. That yeah. wasn't. Yeah. We agreed. I just want to say quickly. Okay. Anyway. I, I want to give a little bit of time to this conversation now, but I don't want to have the conversation right. that might come no, up on Wednesday at this moment. But I, but I would agree with you. But giving you a taste. I get it. No, I <laughs> get it. That's why happen? I wanted to, yeah. to mention. I mean, I think that um, the concern about the meeting on Wednesday is that it, it really could, um, I guess what I would say, Rick, is if you're looking for a consensus to take draconian measures, to, ex to express our opposition or, or displeasure with what's happening, um, I think that will bring out the divisions that, the very real and, and still present divisions that exist on the, on well, the What parts. would you have me do? The people of our town are, and Worcester and, you know, probably all our towns in the end, are really being disserved by this action. Okay, it's something you know, I, I don't, I mean, you look at me, I've been vocal in this. I'm not the only person. There are a lot of people, there people like Michael Duane and, and, you know, Kyle, and you know, have, these are AGs, and they're against this in a very vocal way, a little bit more eloquent than I am, but even as much or more so than I am. You know, you have, this is a big issue, you know, and, you know, it has, you know, it has blown up elsewhere. It's not going away after this year. We're going to go down this path. And when the reality of this hits the municipalities in a few years, you know, it's we're going to be digging out of a bigger mess. That's why I don't. I mean, I'm not. I want to start a fight in that room. But this is something that we've we all have got to do. You know, collectively, and, you know, go about this in a little bit different way. Because that preferred model just does not work for us. I guess it definitely does work for our town. But the not all, not all boards feel that way. You well, that's good, but some do. There are well, a lot that, of people that. What, but my my so let me just say this. I, I think that our there is a real advantage to um, right now. This is a state versus community or district issue. It really is a is a disagreement between levels of government. Right. It is not currently a disagreement among the boards in our SU. Which is unusual, because a lot of and that is places a, were, were really nasty to their neighbors, and it's really, really difficult for them to live together now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that we really need to praise and carry on as much as we can, that yes, we were divided, we have found a way to come together, Please let us continue this path because it seem it will be the one that is most successful if you force this um, because of the, the financial problem on us. It will be a, a, a disaster for those the five towns. They will not automatically come together the way we might, if we're allowed to do it on our own. Well, what I'm what I'm trying to say is that that that's even more true if we now, at this point of time, I agree. Yes, fracture as boards and start to yeah. So that that's really my main, my personal main concern and, and sort of hope for the meeting would be that we'd be able to to navigate through that without having the boards come apart in their in the way that they want to proceed on this. I don't see why it would be a war at all. I mean, to me, it I mean, actually surprises me that we're even going there because we've already made a decision about where we thought we should go. Now we've ba we've gotten we basically you know kind of been ignored, and more than that, you know we've been you know politely given the middle finger essentially by to this point, and you know that as I see it, I mean this is not something you do and. The, you know, the whole, that whole 706 B process was set up, or the intent was to really explore, well, it was actually to look at the preferred model, which didn't work for us, but we developed, you know, something that would, and I just don't see, you know, I, I would see this meeting being about how we push that forward. Not, I mean, how, what would, 
you see this meeting. I mean, the only other option is to kind of roll over and let this happen. And they're, you know, in my Well, I'm going to, I'm, I will happily and personally go, if that's the will of the board, I will go to the State Board of Education and vig vigorously defend our AGS proposal. Um, if there are, I think, just so that you know, I think if there are suggestions raised that, that we take other actions, uh, you know, legal or political or otherwise, I'm not sure. I, you know, I think there's a cost-benefit analysis to how much does our strategy of resistance, um, or what, what risk does it pose for dividing our school system against itself? Oh, and to play devil's advocate, it, it, what we have now is a compromise. And there yeah. are almost 50% of the people who, agree, who agreed initially with what the agency of ed has proposed. Yeah, but they're yeah, I mean, clear when you look split. at those five lines, and they're clear winners and losers in that. I, I told, I told, I'm playing them advocate it, about it. Yeah, yeah, important, we're not going to roll over that. But importantly, loser, importantly that. though, the, yeah. the, the boards that would have been quote unquote winners on a financial basis right. voted to say, we're right. not, we're not going to do that and to Cat to Callis. That's what to, it's to isn't that what our proposal is about? We should be defending this proposal. Absolutely. It's about opening up those wounds and splitting well, those. We want, we want to defend it. I, I think this is about defending our proposal. Right. And how, and how, are, we to right. And how are we going to do that? It's not right. And then, in my mind, if the Board of Education says exactly the same thing the Agency of Education said, then it comes to the point where, we, where there has to be a stronger discussion on, okay, are we going to go in this direction or are we going to go in that direction? I don't think we're at that point yet. I agree. I agree. So again, to go back to what I said at the beginning, I think this meeting Wednesday, you know, here we talk a little bit about what the AOE said, but that's their recommendation. Our, what, I, what I'm suggesting, what East Montpelier is suggesting is that's still the, the proposal we made to the AOE is still our proposal. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to present that proposal to the Board of Education? Yeah. And then whatever the Board of Education decides dictates what our future, and you know, we, we would need future meetings of some kind, perhaps. But that would happen after the Board of Education, and, and we would bring our same plan, our same compromise plan, you can call it if you want, but our plan that we all agreed to, to the Board of Education. Well, I think there we would bring it, we would do a comparative of what the response was and the areas where we felt there was flaw in the, in the, in the first rejection of this policy. And then, yeah, and I, even, even, I mean, I would say, I mean, <coughs> reading the AOE's recommendation, and we can talk about this on Wednesday, but I, I felt like it was like looking at our our AGS proposal in a funhouse mirror, mm -hmm. it's been suggested to me. Is yeah, I think that's analogy. accurate. So uh, there's two other questions that I I wanted to raise with the executive committee. Um, they're just questions. I don't even know if it's if it's really a good time to raise them, but I think they are questions that I've had. Um, one is that if we if the state board is going to do what what all indications are that it will on November 30th, um, th and then the implication of that is that we're supposed to be, we would, um, supposed to be operating by, as a, a union district by July 1st of next year, which is an incredibly short time frame. And regardless of what we hope happens or, you know, wish to avoid, um, I guess I, I I wonder if uh, we're, we would be doing our school system a disservice if we decline to do two things. Uh, one of which would be to consider um, at some level what kinds of articles of agreement, if, we, if we're gonna be forced to do this, what kinds of articles of agreement would we want? Because if we don't have that, we're gonna get the default ones from the state and we're gonna have 90 days uh, to either uh, change them or accept them uh, over, a, over the holidays. And then the other side of this is, apart from what the boards may have to wrestle with, 
is what the administration of the school system will have to deal with in terms of thinking about suddenly changing from the financial and HR administration of six legal entities to one uh, over an incredibly short period of time. And that's just scratching the surface, I think, of what the administration would have to do. So as, as triggering and as incendiary as those questions could possibly be in our conversation, I guess I'm, I'm asking you um, if those seem like questions we ought to be raising with the SU board, or? I think, I think that's the wrong meeting to read to that. I just think it's, it will just throw everybody into a frenzy. Yeah. Okay. Well, not that bad, but I mean, it really, it, it, really, it really would get people thinking of what I want if this happens, rather than we need to be thinking together still. We, we, we all agreed to this, and we're going to, as far as I was concerned, we agreed to see it together to the end. We haven't gotten to the end yet. We have to get a strategy of how we're going to approach the end game and, and, and get a good one and um, go from there. And I, I think raising this issue now, it, it was, wait till after we've had our meeting with the... Wait until after board. August 15th. Yeah, yeah yes. until August 15th. Okay. I think it's I good agree. for us to be thinking about it maybe or whatever, but I would not bring it up at a meeting. I think it, it would make it long and cranky. That's the, that's <laughs> incendiary, as we know from the last discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that, in a way, it would not be very smart of us either. To start, I know what you're saying. I'm really I wrestling with it. I've wrestled with it a lot. I mean, I get what you're hard. saying, and I think like it's yeah. it's opening up a can of worms. But I also feel like there's a kind of responsibility or due diligence piece of it. That, well, if it comes you know, down, I mean, let's think this forward. You know, if it comes down to us having this imposed with no choice, and then with essentially, and we decide not to really play hardball ball in some way and fight against this. Uh, I mean, those articles, don't they, they in a sense become a lot easier because they're, what are they going to? So can I yeah. throw on some information? information? Go ahead, please. Um, I've been looking at this and talking with my peers who've gone through merger. The fastest merger in the state was done in three months that superintendents Mill River Unified District, David Downs, who's a good colleague, said to me, he said, Bill, I never would want to do it three months again. He said, we missed so many things that we were legally, we didn't have right. And I know that Chris, either you or someone in your office was like con constantly on the phone with elections laws and all that. Uh, he, and they said that we barely had, they didn't even have all their federal IDs and they barely had everyone elected and they, put the policies on like, two days before they transfer it into another organization. Other superintendents who have done this over a year have said it's a lot of work, but it can be done, but there'll be extra, they had to get into a lot of extra overtime. And so one of the things I started to do, Matthew and I had this discussion two weeks ago because I don't need to know now, and I, I like the discussion about, you know, let's ask this after August 15th, I think that's fine, but you all know the budgeting process. I need to know, I can push the budget. We start September 15th for budgeting for the next year. That can still happen in the schools, but I need to know what I'm budgeting towards, probably no later than November 30th. And that's really pushing it. Lori would say to me, that's too late, Bill. And so I just I just want you to understand that. I get that. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're essentially building a Building a new we're budget. We're taking it's a double 70, budget. 17. No, we can't build a double budget. We don't have the capacity to do that unless I, you can right, I get until it. you give me more personnel. It, it's either we, we don't we just don't have that flexibility in our personnel time. Plus, plus we're looking at the financial software yeah. shift, which may be happening concurrently. Currently at the same time, yes. plus negotiations, plus a couple other things that are heavy hitters. So I can wait. But there's going to be a point where as we get closer to the end of September, I'm going to be saying, I, you now we're starting to get into harm area. Not that it can't be overcome and maybe harm is too strong, but we won't be doing the due diligence that we do in some years. When is the full board, the next full board meeting after August 15th? September, I believe. End of September. 
in the September. So that's too late. I you think I, I, I do want to wrap up this discussion. I, I'm sorry, Bill. To, yeah. I, I just want to say I think we're going to have to actually really think about whether I think we're going to need extra SU board yeah. meetings. I well, mean, that's what I, that's sort of what I was leading to. Through this whole process. It may be a it's board meeting a, to elect a committee to figure out articles of agreement and the other things in case that's where we end up. Yeah. Because I mean, that's we, not going to happen. But we, we may have to schedule, anyway. we may have to schedule a meeting at the end of August or early September just to discuss that. Yeah. Because as we're seeing here, it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be like, yeah, sure, we should do that. You know, there's going to be some strong feelings about it on both sides, but. I just wanted to raise that. We, I feel like we don't change course in any way until we hear what happens after August 15th. Mm -hmm. Are we going to hear anything? No. I don't know what the time frame no, is for. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't expect we'd hear any feedback from them until November. Just like the last meeting you did. Somewhere yeah, I, exactly. Somewhere I heard or read, and I hear and read things, I miss some things. I um, that they make the decision as of November 1st, 2018, but it doesn't necessarily go into effect for a year. So I, you, Bill, probably know the dates better than I, uh, but somehow I got that. No, it's very clear. I went and reread Act 46 on Friday. We read Act 49 and I looked at all the FAQs. Operational July 1st, 2019. I don't that. I don't know what that answer is. I just know that you're in violation of the law. The law, yeah, but what I'm just saying. No, take away our money. It was six months worth of. Or take over the or take over the district. You know. Yeah, this this people doesn't do that if they you think that would be a wise decision. I think this is where Yeah. You know, there's a, they play with fire, political fire. I mean, where would they? Will they? Will so they, I, I suggest okay. we not approach this mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Okay, that's and, fine. And wait, and you know, maybe it, I don't know in the next executive committee meeting, but, but figure out a full board meeting that we probably need to schedule at the end of August. Yeah. Okay. To Bob do the next step. And we can talk about that with the SU board on August second too. So I'm just going to point out some dates. You don't have an executive committee meeting until the end of August. Mm -hmm. So if you want to discuss your calendar, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you know, some people would like to get out of here and be included, but you're going to, I would like, unless you want Matthew and you and I to do it, if it's, you know, if you want to talk about dates or if you and I want to figure that out, I'm just trying to say, we don't have an executive committee meeting until the end of August. I would, I would say let's, uh, let's discuss it and bring a, our recommendation to the August second retreat okay. about it because we do okay. have that opportunity to that kind opportunity. of to, sorry, uh, I was yeah, yeah. That. no that's all right but okay thanks um, two point seven is the consultant for contract analysis so we had bids as you were all made aware of um, in the May meeting we we're going out to uh, we put an RP out for uh, folks to look at. Um, job classifications for the non-bargaining um, positions and we had three firms come back um, and it's a wide variety they range anywhere from seventy two seventy two hundred dollars to seven thousand two hundred to fifty six thousand um, dollars we submit we sent out to six different companies that do it I haven't had time to do reference checks or with that big a variation, I think there's a very difference in thinking about the scope of the work. So there needs to be some interviews and phone calls. Uh, we were hoping to get folks going here in the end of this month, beginning of next. Um, if it's under $15,000 according to the statutes, I can award. If it's over 15000 I need a board to award or the executive committee. Um, so you could, I'm looking for some discussion of process. I can tell them that it's going to be held a little bit longer and we can come back together at the next meeting to be determined. Or, you know, we had them all hold the prices for 30 days, but we'll be beyond the 30 days. Um, but I'm not at a point, and I'm just looking for some some thinking time from this board for, and I only need five minutes of it. I don't need a lot. But just to say, hey, how can we, um, 
I think when I see almost a factor of eight, <laughs> that hey, there's some, something's going on. Something's going wrong here. Right. Did they both read the same proposal? Uh, What's the yeah. middle one? What's the third one? The third one's twenty six thousand. We were thinking we we're trying to get it under twenty thousand dollars to do this. So what's the seven thousand dollars? Seven dollar one is one. Um, he doesn't. There isn't much on here. It's Jack Cleary, um, Cleary HR Consulting, Human Resource Consultants, uh, out of South Burlington. Um, there's some people here that I recognize their names and rec or recognize their for references. Um, the middle one is Hickark and Borgman, who does our insurance. They're twenty six thousand. They've done this with other supervisory unions. And then we went the third place that. Uh, was Corn Ferry, who has worked with the state to do this type of work, with the state of Vermont. And so, um, and you can see the thickness of yeah, it's proposals. Yeah, so interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, okay. Um, so I need to go back and look at that. If it's, you know, I didn't want to go much, you know, and that's why I told you back in May, it's 15 to 20,000 is what we're trying to scope this work at. And it really needs to be done. And I keep bumping into places where it's like, we need this leveling of job classifications around here. So if Hickok and Boardman is a known entity and they've come in not sort of ridiculously out of right. scope or for what we wanted to, to spend on this, um, otherwise we're looking at, at pushing this off until at least the beginning of August, and not the end of August. Right. I mean, I'm thinking about talking to one, to these two, Hickok mm -hmm. and Borgman and Cliff, Claire at the Corn Fair. When I saw that come today, I was like, yeah, no, thank you. Um, but to saying, I want to know what the, Jack Cleary, the principal, I don't know how big his firm is, I need to look into that. Um, and Hickok and Borgman, what were you thinking 26,000 was? Mm -hmm. what, is that, what is the experience of this? Seven thousand dollar. That well, that's why I have to get you references yeah. and things like that. What are people are going to do, and how much of this is, is he's expecting us to, you know, how much is he expecting work inside the house to help, versus how much is it on your own beside? They're each. We've said in the RFP, we're going to give you these documents. We'll give you all the job uh, descriptions and you know benefits that everyone has. And I'm wondering if <coughs> you know, just what their assumptions were. So what's being asked of us tonight? Yeah. Um, do you need approval tonight? If I don't need, a, I'm not asking for approval. I didn't want to ask for approval tonight. I was in this place, Stephen, of thinking, if you would like me to stay below fifteen thousand, I think there's a way of doing that. I think it's like anything you're going to pay. We, what you pay, you get what you pay for. So, um, you know, if it was even worth considering going up above the fifteen thousand, if it's not going above fifteen thousand, I can award this myself as your superintendent. Via the statutes on purchasing for the state of Vermont. But Which we can also know. authorize you to award a bit of not more than X. Then not more than X, and you can do yeah. that. And I can I, I can just go do that. But I've got to do the analysis and it. Yeah. Just we were planning when we set out the RFP that this meeting was next Wednesday. So right. We're giving ourselves a week and a half to do the analysis, so I can be sitting here with you and right, 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 making that proposal. And we had to switch the date. So and you had it. Do, 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 do we want to set a top end for? So what's in the budget? We're using we're using fund balance to pay okay. this. It strikes me on that idea that you park and board. I dealt with them before on the insurable side. They were very good and they were very thorough from that. And I don't have no idea with something like this, but I did a lot of dealings, so I trusted them. Yeah. And there, I think we did something thorough. I think we have them for real real estate to do. So, yeah. like but, but we don't have a recommendation for right. No, no, I'm just asking. I think your, your question of what's the, what are you willing to spend as a board on this, what do you value it for, you know, for the issues we've talked about? Would you have time to do the analysis and, and award a bid by the, by the end of next week? When you I'm trying to, yeah. You would, you would. and that would yeah. be your preference would be to do that. That would be my preference is to get it out of here before the first of the month. Okay. What if we approve a top end of 26000 Sure. Yeah. With with the thought of perhaps that is too much and there yeah. could be some negotiation to bring it down. But if we approve a top end of 26 and we're comfortable with that, then it essentially lets Bill pick between those two plans. Would you like to word a motion? I will make a motion <laughs> that, that we 
recommend a maximum amount to be spent on hiring a consultant to um, I don't think we want to can, can approve. Yeah, can I can I offer a friendly yes, amendment? You okay, can. you can just offer the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion is to authorize the superintendent to award a bid for consulting services to align our non bargaining contracts uh, in an amount not to exceed twenty six thousand dollars. You get all that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would second that. I, I don't want to make the motion. Oh. You can make the motion. Oh, that's the motion. That's the motion that I made. <laughs> okay, okay, thanks. It just sounded like it was coming from that. It really mean. I was channeling my voice. You said it so well, Stephen. I, yeah. Uh, okay, any, any further discussion of the motion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Uh, do we want to do the action agenda? Or, or, or um, actually, Bill, there were other things in your superintendent report. I don't know. If, did you want to speak to any of those? Or I had a couple questions, I guess. I can. I just didn't know if you want to do the action Let's agenda. Let's do the action agenda. Let's do the action agenda. OK. okay. Let's get some so action. I'm going to do this. Is this just one? Yeah, there's one. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm making sure as you take one as you go around. I'll need one of those back. I didn't take one. Here you go, Rick. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Two of these names you'll recognize, and I'll explain that in a minute. Do you have one of these things? Yes, please, thank you. Thank you. you got one more. One more, there's four. Oh, four of them. Okay. In the, in my, um, and some of this I explained in my, um, <laughs> Superintendent report. I'm going to say, we have, in, as you know, we've been doing a job coach. I'm going to start with Ann Carter, who's been a long term special educator math coach at East Montpelier and is retiring. And we're able to hire her back at point four to help our math coaching. We feel that we need more math coaching. Our data shows that we need more professional development in that area. And so Ann has agreed to come back from retirement for a point four position as a math coach. She's been very successful in that work. She'll be focusing on elementary work and on selection of a new math program. Did she retire this year? Yes, end of this year. Yeah. Patty Taffel is another retirement. Uh, and we need, yeah. <laughs> And she is willing to be, a, and these, that's a one-year non-renewable for Anne, as all retirement positions we've been doing. Uh, after someone retires, they have a one-year non-renewable. We've done that. Adrian, as you know, we've done that with Steve Barrows and did Moonstown Mass over at U32. Uh, Patty Taffel, we need a point for speech-language pathologist and summing up all the student needs. That's been in the, um, for two years, we've left it unfilled. Um, and we've had to contract out some to make that work, so we're trying to lower some of the special education costs. So Patty's willing to come back and work point four. Mainly she'll be based at, at East Montpelier. So we didn't go back to the East Montpelier board, Steve, sorry, but we thought the East Montpelier board would be fine with that. Um, oh, one of these is not yours. The U32 one that says Katie Stanley, that is not yours. That's the U32 board. You'll hear about that in August. Before you move on to Lauren Malconi that says U32 is? Oh, because that's special. Yeah, okay. And before you move on to yeah. Lauren, yeah. so the reason these two were only interviewed by two people is because they're no, known no, entities. No, no entities okay. in this system. It was like I, I'm comfortable with that. Internal, just, internal yeah. postings only. We follow what's required in the negotiated agreement. Yep. Yeah. Known people. Successful, very successful. Um, Lauren. And I'm going to have a hard time with their last name. Meliconian. Man, Meliconian. That, uh, that's, clo that's close to what it sounded like from her. I just can't get it through this head of mine. Mm -hmm. um, sh she is a special, we have one special education position that's open at U32 for Andrew Conforte. I interviewed Lauren actually today, um, purposely to hopefully to bring her to you tonight. Um, she was interviewed, you can see everyone down on the bottom, with Steve, 
Steve, Steven, Bill Dice, Brittany, uh, Janine. She comes to us from the New School here in Montpelier. Um, she's working on her master's degree in leadership and education. She's worked in Montpelier. She's worked over in Rivendale. So she would be our last special educator at U32. We still have one opening in Berlin that we have not been able to fill. So there would be three tonight. Sorry, I got to mix up. Here's the pile back. So I'll bring that pile to U32 next time I see all of you. Do you want that one back then? Sure, that would have to copy. And I just keep That's, the Katie. That's the Katie. That's not a. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if there's discussion or not, but if there's not, we, we could move this as a slate. Yep. Go ahead. I'll make that motion to accept the new hires for Washington Central. As Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thanks. Okay, uh, 3.2, approving blanket authorization for check orders for FY18 and 19. This is on page seven. This is a statement that we uh, do every year, essentially, uh, to authorize, I'm so, sorry, Bill, not to- You're doing fine. Yeah. To uh, authorize payroll checks and uh, accounts payable and uh, et cetera in months that we don't meet or when we change our um, meeting date, uh, if it would create problems or incur late fees or things like that. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, do we need to sign this bill? Is uh, it, it looks like we I'm do. Starting with Dorothy. And okay, I'll yeah, go ahead. Come around. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstentions? Okay, and then we have the investment bid on page eight. Yeah. Um, which is also fairly standard and something we do every year. Bill, is there anything special we need to know? Just this, follow or? the, yeah. it's community, national, and the reason we want, you can see they have the best, we Community, national, or community? No, it's community bank. bank. Sorry, community yeah, bank. Yeah. The reason we're staying with them is because we, we look at the differential with all the school districts from the loan, from the interest to the loan, uh, loan rates, it's best for the schools, and we like to try to keep all our banking together. And these are the ones with all the other districts. Yeah, they everyone has for community yeah, Thank you. It's so easy to get those two. I know. But we'll so I, I, know. The motion. I would make a motion that we approve investment and operating accounts bid to Community right. Bank NA for the time period July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, 3.4, authorize the superintendent to award the propane bid. This is, we get these bids and we have 24 hours to turn around. We do, you all did that, so your local districts can buy. We do and we could do 3.5 to, as well, the insurance bid. Yeah, okay. The Cock Boardman actually saved us money and got us better coverage this year. Who would, would anybody like to move those? I'll move both of those. And I'll second them. Okay. Uh, Can I make a, no, go ahead. Of course, any no, discussion? No, go ahead. finish that, finish that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, thank you. Yes. So backing up as a point of order. Yep. Dorothy and Rick both shouldn't sign this. I didn't. Rick did. Oh, perfect. No, don't worry, I'm, I'm not, not voting. Read, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, not, read, I'm not, not voting. No, Excellent. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I watched it go right fine. Perfect. <laughs> uh, three. Many times. Three point six. Authorize reserving funds for job coaching, coaching and case management. Uh, That's what Lori talked about. That's what Lori spoke to. It's the yes. forty-five thousand five forty-three for case management and forty-one thousand four fifty-one Rick for job coaching. Okay. So moved. Adrian moved. Is there a second? Second. Lisa, did you get the numbers? Is it in the documents? Uh, it's, it's in, in the financial the report. report. Okay. 15. Okay. Okay. It's at the bottom of 15. Okay. They're 45 and 41,000. 
Uh, is there discussion of this motion? It doesn't sound like there is any discussion. So that being the case, uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, thanks. And that, I think, is our action agenda. agenda. Uh, are there any comments or questions on the reports to the board apart from the superintendent report? So this would be the director's report. Director's report. Just an observation. Yeah, go ahead. So the World Peace Game. Yeah. Um, I went to the site. Actually, I was very excited to read through it all. However, I think there should be a plan for some community outreach. Before I think it's really good. I want to go with it. I get no problem with it. But I, I, I don't mean community outreach. I think there should be some communication to the community about what this is and what it's about, rather than just having students do it and go home and, you know, what were you doing? I was participating in the World Peace Game. Well, what's that all about? And just a, a paragraph or a few sentences with a link. Just, I, I, when I went through it, in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, there could be some people in our community that might feel uneasy about just seeing a few words and what does that mean? And just so that it's communicated, this is briefly what it's about. Here's a link if you want more information. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And you know, maybe I'm being overly cautious, but that's what struck me about it. Okay, thanks. But when you go in and look at it, the learning that occurred, I think it's great. I think it's outstanding. Bill, any thoughts about that? Or? Yeah, I think we can get some out, but we're training our teachers to be able to integrate this into, the, into our curriculum, either at the middle school or five, six. We don't know if we can do it twice and get two different objectives out of it. It's, a, it's phenomenal see it. And yeah. We sent two people out to be trained and they came back and said, one being Jen, she said, like, we have to host this next year. And the big basis is making all these playing boards, which is like, it's three-dimensional chess on something well above that level because the number of pieces is... Five-dimensional chess? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's three dimensions deliberately, but it's, the kids have to do, it's all, it's transferable oh, it's the chess pieces. Oh, yeah, and so they have to negotiate with each other, and it's a whole simulation. Um, but it's designed to take people outside their comfort zone. Yeah. So I just think from a parental point of view, it would be good for parents to kind of understand that, that their son or daughter might come home. Being and, that, and that's conflicted been, part and for these 25 the students. It's important that they do. I think it's just so that it just doesn't happen, and the parents like, well, what the hell's going on there? You're coming in this, you're all, you know, cranked up on what's going on. Right. Just so, here's the link, you know, we strongly endorse it, we strongly favor it, this is what we're doing, but if you want to find out more about it, here's what So it I'll is. check with Jen, I think that has been done with the 25 students already, it's when we bring it to the bigger community, yeah. which is the plan. This, the this is coming kind of being part of the curriculum process. While we're here, yep. um, the director's report. So, could you very briefly tell us? We have 80 students signed up to attend the extended school year program. Who signs up typically for students that it required in their IEP to have extended school year services? So Can like, others come? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I don't think we'd ever turn anyone away from that, but it's particularly students that have that in their IEP that they need extended services through the summer. Okay. Will we provide transportation? We provide time? the transportation. We actually meet at each school in each town. We don't go to run all the bus routes, but we run a bus from each school to where it's been hosted the past two years at East Montpelier, and before that, U32 will be at Berlin this summer. Okay. We really have about three schools to be honest. Yeah. Those are the three.
Are there any other comments on the reports to the board, 4-2 through 4-7? And I, I don't mean to rush, but uh, please feel free to raise anything you want to raise. But, uh, well, I just, I highlighted the clunky hiring process of special ed, but obviously that's another. Oh, that's the superintendent report, though. We're going to come back oh, to that, okay. actually. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's, <laughs> 4.1 then, uh, superintendent report. And yeah, I had some questions about some of the things that were in here or, or wanted to hear. But I'm assuming the special ed hiring process that we tabled would address That's right. this clunky process. Yeah. Yes. It, it's really hard. It's really hard. We, I had someone for Berlin. We've gone through three candidates now. That I, it's not been the, some of it's the clunkiness of the board process, but some of it is, it, frankly, it is, if you're a special ed teacher, you can, you can play districts off of each other if you're past April. Right. That's right. You get to choose. You get choose. To choose. So just for those who weren't there, we had quite a discussion about this at our, at our April meeting. Yeah, and I, you don't and need to we, go through it. No, it's all right. It's just that uh, I think, again, Chris McVeigh had some strong opinions about it. And also, we're kind of at the tail end of the hiring process this year. so. With other fish to fry, we didn't really feel like we had to prioritize it for urgent conversation in, in, in June. But um, but it is definitely, it's going to stay on our agenda and get addressed one way or the other. So, yeah. Uh, well, we've covered a lot, of, a lot of this already, actually. I guess it's just the grants funding update. Uh, that, yep. seemed, that seemed... So um, portentous to me or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's going to get there. Um, we're going to have to start looking at other avenues to fund our curriculum camp, which is our biggest um, teacher development project that we do every year after this summer. Uh, so next summer, we're going to have to look to other funding sources or within our internal. We've talked about this at this table before that we may have to start putting money aside or making decisions. It is the way. It is the I don't know what the percentage is, but to me, it's a majority of the reason we've been able to make the curriculum and proficiency work we've been able to. The, the, the re release on Wednesdays at the high school is having an effect because you have such a concentrated number of teachers. And we talked about that before, too, that the Wednesdays were not getting the bang we want as much, especially at smaller schools. Um, so that's part of it. And Calais Elementary School is going to lose its, its Title I status, which is a lot of money going away. And we'll be looking to either cut personnel or increase funding. And those are your supports for your struggling learners. Are they losing that because they have they, fewer free and reduced, reduced lunch kits? The percentage, below, they're down, below, they're percentage. right around 30% now. And you have to be over 40. Um, so the number of kids that are in poverty is going down. And the number of kids is going down. Right. <laughs> so in Calis, and so they, we've been told, we've been grandfathered every one year, we'll get grandfathered for the FY19, and we've been told there's no way to come back. So that's, that's your reading supports and some of your math supports for students that are struggling. Are there any other districts that are, that are sort of on a similar trajectory in terms of, just to try to anticipate that this is going to... Um, Keep being a problem or? I don't see a big difference right now in, who's in the demographics of the percentages of free and reduced lunch kids in any other district. Doty's actually been on a tick up, you know, the highest, where Berlin is second to the highest. Where, and Doty and Berlin have always been close. So if we consolidated, I'm just putting it out there. Would they still look at each individual school, or do they take it so as a whole? So by federal legislation, you have to look at each school because this is federal money. Okay. And so some of the, the, the money that we reserve, or you asked us to reserve, is to try to address yeah, some of the shortfall might be, for next year. Yeah, I say we're, I'd like to use some of that job coaching for FY19, but we're, you know, we're going to start getting into that place of using having to use other funds from somewhere else besides federal funds we've been and for most of our summers we're in 70 75 people working for two or three days on curriculum and, and they and people like it because they get it done right after school so they have their thoughts already collected and then they go away for the summer and it, it just it's a good time to do some work with people who say i'm willing to stay for a couple extra days and do that work is that, is that federal money yeah 
and that's the money that's going away. And that's gotten us, I mean, if you look at anything under Jen's site, all that curriculum work, all the proficiency work, that's, we're developing all that's pre-K graduation work. And that's true statewide, isn't it? Yep. That's where the money is just going. It's going away. And it's going away on the special education side, too. I just don't have a, Kelly, at the point of writing this report, we didn't have a full um, accounting of all that mm -hmm. on the special education side. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks. That's important to be aware of. Um, yeah, it's just interesting to see how we work through that. I just want to make you aware of it. I didn't want to call. Okay, so the uh, last thing on our agenda then is to discuss the superintendent contract, which is going to require executive session. Um, so I make a motion to move into executive session at 737 to discuss the superintendent's contract. 731. 732. 732. Is there a second? 737. Were you giving us six minutes? <laughs> Is there a second? Sure. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.